Hello friends, <coughs> as we all know, uh, we that is the teachers, the lecturers and the audience have been a part of this series on feminist literary texts and the thought and uh, today, uh, this month we will be uh, concluding the discussion in a formal way and uh, in the last four or five months when the series went on, then you were in touch with thinkers that emerged in Europe in particular and also in America. Uh, from 18th century onwards. So, we covered long distances and finally we reached the uh, latter half of the 20th century and uh, today's lecture uh, on Judith Butler is by uh, Professor Payal Nagpal who teaches English literature in Delhi University's Janaki Devi Memorial College and uh, she is she's an English scholar, she is also a theatre person and she is a feminist. So, that kind of advantage we have in her uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a lecturer today and uh, uh, I would be wondering if uh, Judith Butler uh, would be saying uh, something very specific that uh, makes her relevant to the discussions today and to the feminist movement that is there in uh, Europe, in America and in the rest of the world. So, uh, without further discussion, uh, let me request Professor Payar Nagpal to please give her comments and her lecture. Thank you, Professor Prakash. So, as mentioned, today's lecture will be on Judith Butler uh, and specifically uh, Judith Butler's book, Gender Trouble. Uh, it's, it's interesting that, uh, you know, as we reach the end of the series, uh, there is a, a very major contribution that Butler makes to the entire uh, discussion and debate around feminism because uh, we uh, today very often use the word performativity. Uh, it's used, I think, in almost uh, all uh, discourses related to human science and social sciences. And uh, specifically, uh, even in theatre, we use the word performativity quite a bit. But uh, uh, original use, of course, was by Jay Austin. But Judith Butler's uh, notion of her idea of gender as a performative category is something that gives an entirely new dimension uh, to the debate on uh, uh, you know, gender studies and feminism. But before we actually uh, head there, so uh, some of the important books, and Judith, Judith Butler has uh, been a very pro prolific writer and uh, uh, her important works are Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity. So, which means that we are uh, going to be looking at Butler's contribution to the feminist debate and feminist thought and, uh, you know, her uh, how it contributes uh, to uh, what she calls a subversion of identity. Another very interesting book by uh, Judith Butler is Bodies That Matter on the Discursive Limits of Sex. So, uh, today we will discuss some of the seminal aspects of, uh, you know, Butler's argument from gender trouble, which will help us understand the idea of when we say doing gender, what do we really speak, uh, you know, mean by doing gender? Do we take the category of gender for granted? Or is gender a performance of a certain sort? And if we use the word performance, is it a linear performance? Is it a predetermined performance? What do we really speaking mean by it? Which brings us to an understanding of the second point, which is that gender is to be looked at as a performative category. So, Butler begins, uh, you know, within her argument, uh, she uses a lot of theories, but primarily post-structuralism and uh, you know very often uses the Foucauldian paradigm. So, uh, and in her, uh, you know, uh, there are two prefaces, uh, two prefaces to her book. One is the one written originally in 1990 and then uh, in a, a recent rep a republication of the book, there is a preface that was added which was the 1999 preface. So, when she revisits her own work in 1999, she says, that uh, she was not simply applying post-structuralism, but she was subjecting those theories to a specific feminist reformulation. So, uh, firstly then, Judith Butler's work becomes interesting because it also connects, in a sense, a post-structuralism uh, and feminism. And, uh, you know, she specifically says it's a feminist uh, reformulation. So, and she is not simply applying post-structuralism here, but uh, is using post-structuralism in a sense to understand this entire debate, which also, uh, you know, is going to indicate a transformation 
in the field of post structuralism itself but more importantly how she begin brings within her uh, within the purview of her argument the existing debates around gender uh, as professor P uh, prakash mentioned that we've covered a long uh, you know a uh, period starting somewhere around the mid 18th century to the 20th century when we look at butler's work we are looking at the work of 1990s and how uh, you know it really speaking helps us understand uh, the idea of feminisms and uh, you know the the third wave really speaking so in the 1990 preface uh, uh, butler uh, begins and butler actually prefers uh, the pronoun they instead of she so i'm going to avoid she here so uh, they begin by saying how trouble within the masculine discourse is is something that is a scandal uh, you know how do we understand the word trouble the title of the book is gender trouble so what are we really what do we mean by trouble and uh, butler explains how you know in a sense the growing up years uh, meant uh, you know trouble of a certain sort but butler then explains uh, you know how within the masculine discourse uh, trouble is seen as a kind of scandal with the sudden intrusion the unanticipated agency of a female object who inexplicably returns the glance uh, and i'm quoting butler here who returns the glance reverses the gaze and contests the place and authority of the masculine proposition so uh, if we look at it a lot of very important keywords that butler is giving us here one of scandal it there is a sudden intrusion then uh, you know uh, the unanticipated agency of a female object which means uh, that the female is also you know in a sense uh, given agency here because she returns the gaze and reverses the gaze and also contests you know the the masculine proposition so generally speaking we when we say reverse the gaze uh, there is a tendency to think that reverses reversing the gaze means that you just simply you know uh, try to invert it in a sense but here reversing the gaze is not a simple inversion but it apart from returning a glance it is also contesting and challenging the the uh, prevailing uh, uh, propositions that exist in society so uh, at the same time butler explains in gender trouble how uh, they understand power as a constant inversion between the subject and the other and asks what is this configuration of power that constructs the subject and the other now this is important because butler uh, you know uh, in her book uh, talks in a big way discusses uh, the the theories of simon de beauvoir and uh, luce irigaray and it is from there that butler evolves uh, you know their own position about what really speaking gender constitutes in society so uh, butler challenges uh, what uh, uh, they call the defining institutions of phallocentrism and compulsory heterosexuality something i think two words that have already been discussed at length uh, in the lecture on irigaray so uh, butler's question then is what best way to trouble the gender categories that support gender hierarchies and compulsory heterosexuality so the the aim at the outset is to of course to uh, you know uh, challenge the prevailing gaze to contest it to return that gaze but to to trouble the existing gender categories and the word trouble then itself is something that is seen as an activity it is it becomes uh, you know something that is being done it is an active uh, you know it is used in the active sense really speaking to uh, uh, trouble gender categories that exist in society and so the first question that butler raises is if gender is constructed then can it be constructed differently and this is where butler looks at the debates around feminism uh, from simone de beauvoir to uh, irigaray uh, the whole idea you know uh, butler takes up uh, beauvoir's idea that if one is uh bo you know one is not born a woman but one becomes one so then the question that butler is asking is is there a cultural compulsion to become one and it is in this way that butler uh, tries to understand uh, beauvoir's argument and uh, uh, butler also is, uh, also refers to uh, beauvoir's um, argument about the othering of the woman and uh, this according to beauvoir also kind of creates a certain kind of a binary 
uh, with which to you know be looking at uh, the the masculine as the subject and the the woman becoming the other so butler raises this question about the body and asks uh, about how the body becomes a passive medium on which cultural meanings are inscribed and uh, uh, butler says that if we go along with this theory of you know becoming a woman under a kind of comp uh, cultural compulsion it almost means as if the body uh, is a passive category uh, the body is simply imbibing whatever culture is in a sense throwing at it so butler points out how actually such a discourse of feminism has largely considered the body as a passive medium but the body should be looked at as an active agency and the body too is constructed uh, you know in a certain manner so uh, uh, you know i'll just uh, share this uh, particular uh, question that butler raises and uh, will then request professor prakash to uh, address uh, this idea so uh, what butler says is to what extent does the body come into being in and through the mark of gender so uh, i think her major contribution in this sense is to understand the active agency that is given to the physical body uh, unlike uh, you know earlier theories that actually looked at uh, the body imbibing the the compulsions of culture uh, of course uh, you know french feminism also kind of brought the body back into the discourse as an active agency the question butler says then the question then emerges how do we reconceive the body no longer as a passive medium or instrument awaiting awaiting the enlivening capacity of a distinctly immaterial will so uh, i'd request uh, professor prakash to uh, please uh, share his views on uh, some of the preliminary comments on uh, butler uh, no <coughs> professor pal i uh, i i'm struck by the idea of uh, performative uh, per performativity uh, in the sense you know that uh, uh, there is generally a question in feminist theory uh, about what can be called the being of the woman that this is what the woman is but here the woman is not there in in, in that particular form here uh, there is a role that is being performed by women and uh, that role defines them so uh, there seems to be to me at least a departure from uh, simon de bois uh, approach which is uh, largely explanatory she wants to make clear as to what a woman is how she becomes a woman and uh, how the social pressures work on her psyche here the woman is looking back towards the male uh, community and she is telling them in very clear terms that uh, they are facing a question that they are facing a challenge and that uh, if uh, they think that she is being scandalous as you rightly said then she wants to raise a scandal against the dominance of males so this is the first point that uh, struck me it's uh, quite important and you have lucidly explained it and the second thing is is regarding you know the kind of active part that the woman would play and there you know she explains the active part so body in that sense uh, is is a means to assert body is not uh, as, as a means to define but as a means to assert the difference between the male body and the female body and the interaction between the two so i think uh, it's an area that uh, is new to us uh, under feminist theory and that in the 1990s the american women the american thinkers they started going in that direction where male dominance is to be actively challenged so i i, I noted you know the uh, predominance of uh, the active oriented phraseology uh, in, in your own discussion so yes uh, and in all. fact actually uh, uh, one of the things that butler does is uh, butler uh, you know uh, transforms this idea of uh, you know the role defining the woman mm -hmm. and uh, what butler is saying is that uh, there is no uh, you know it is not as if an existing uh, uh, subject position or an existing role is to uh, you know finally define the woman and she actually that's where she uh, brings in the idea of performativity so uh, uh, if we actually uh, look at uh, butler's comments on uh, both Uh, Simone de Beauvoir and Irigaray. So, in gender trouble, but uh, uh, then what would you uh, say regarding you know uh, somebody uh, acting on the stage and addressing an audience uh, in the in the act of uh, you know act, uh, there uh, on the stage talking to people? Uh, does that person become an actor and doesn't remain a human being? The, the kind of stage that Judith Butler is occupying in the in the thinking uh, domain. 
So actually, uh, Butler's idea of performativity presents gender as a kind of uh, fabrication that you know you continually. So uh, if I, if one were to apply uh, Butler's idea of gender as a performative category to let's say the stage, then uh, repetitive uh, uh, you know performances is what would constitute the actor mm -hmm. instead of already beginning with the idea of an actor and saying that this is an actor who's now going to go and perform on stage and there is a kind of um, uh, ready made uh, you know uh, uh, role that that is there or a ready made expectation on the part of the audience so this is completely done away with within uh, butler's um, uh, problematic of uh, gender so it's not dramatic in that sense. It is that uh, the, the the female answer to, to the woman to the male problem uh, that that is being presented in a in a in a, in a different way. Uh, that and I think uh, Butler's argument is and the reason why uh, Butler's understanding of gender in this way has been applied in many other fields. And as as mentioned, uh, you know, in theatre also, this is a, a term that is used very often. And the reason for that is it is extremely liberating. Mm -hmm. The very idea that you can identity can be looked at some as something that is fluid mm -hmm. instead of being looked at as something that is uh, constituted by uh, you know predetermined and pre existing roles mm -hmm. uh, can prove to be very liberating in an otherwise patriarchal society so that's quite true i I agree yes. <coughs> so, uh, uh, Butler draws attention to the problems in existing formulations around uh, the sex gender debate and uh, Butler troubles these uh, categories and shows how the body has been treated as passive and there is a need and in fact at one point, uh, you know, Butler almost talks about the, the subjugation in a sense of the body to the mind then. So there is a need to bring the body in as an active formulation by giving it agency. So in presenting this, uh, Butler's, uh, you know, import, two important formulations, she, uh, Butler addresses the theories of both uh, Bouva and Irigaray and according to uh, uh, them, in Bouva's theory, it is the women who are marked as the other and in the case of Irigaray, the woman represents a sex which is not one but is multiple. So within a language that is phallogocentric, women then constitute the unrepresentable, in other words, uh, women represent uh, the, the sex which cannot be thought, you know, <coughs> that cannot be thought and there is a linguistic absence and opacity uh, really speaking that uh, uh, Butler highlights and uh, really speaking, uh, you know, brings forth. So it is, it is these two very important uh, ways in which uh, we have been looking at the constitution really speaking of gender uh, that Butler addresses in her uh, book Gender Trouble. So to put it very simply, if Simone de Bova explains the othering of uh, women, Irigaray and French feminism by and large, in fact, you know, in the 1999 preface, uh, she says that, you know, how she's an American, but actually speaking, uh, brings in the whole idea of French feminism and how uh, Butler is using French feminism here. So. Uh, women, uh, really speaking, then uh, she takes on from that point of multiplicity and plurality that uh, Irigaray, really speaking, gives uh, to the uh, you know uh, 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 feminine gender, really speaking. So uh, now within uh, Bouvier's framework and uh, patriarchy, women are seen as really speaking. Butler says that you know within this problematic, women are seen as the mysterious other against which. Uh, you know, masculine identity is being defined. But for Irigaray, the idea of the feminine sex as a linguistic absence would remain and, uh, you know, the multiplicity as mentioned would be very, very important. And Irigaray's discourse is important because it brings in the body as an active medium and this is something that uh, uh, Butler makes use of, though uh, Butler, of course, uh, you know, transforms the field itself. Now, um, these different and conflicting formulations of gender also then point towards the need for a rethink on gender categories. And this is why Butler in the 1999 preface explains how gender trouble is rooted in French feminism. And she calls this a curious American construction because, um, uh, you know, Butler uh, uh, themselves being uh, from the American context. And this also, in a sense, I think... Um, 
intensifies the debate around uh, gender and the debate around feminism and brings in uh, uh, you know uh, uh, brings to our notice the different trends really speaking that are there so uh, the second point that uh, butler kind of raises with respect to bovers argument is that if there is uh, an othering if the woman is mysterious in a sense the the body in the case of uh, you know bovers problematic bovers argument the feminine uh, uh, is a disavowed corporeality you know the referring to the physical body whereas the masculine uh, you know is posed as a disembodied subject and this is where butler you know brings in uh, j l austen's idea of the performative uh, to understand this in fact if we look at the title of the book you know it's uh, uh, the subversion of identity really to speaking to put it simply what is uh, butler's idea of the female body what exactly does she mean uh to put it very simply butler is saying that you cannot ignore the female body mm -hmm. the body is itself as much a participant in this constitution of gender it is not something related to the mind alone because uh, she is constantly uh, you know talking about simone de beauvoir here and saying that if culture is inscribed that one is not born a woman one becomes one if it is all about culture then in this kind of an argument the body becomes a very passive uh you know really speaking medium that allows uh, an inscription of culture on the oh, body oh, which means that uh, when you said that uh, culture and body are different that then then body was supposed to be passive but in this case uh, body doesn't take the influence of culture directly but also asserts itself uh, uh, through its own uh, you know existence uh, and it also contests maybe culture uh, what butler is saying is that the body needs to be made and understood as an active agency mm. it can't be about culture alone there is a kind of performance that is associated with the physical body itself which means and that not is values important. norms no orthodoxy etc but that uh, the body as as reality also is represented through discussion through uh, depiction yes etc yes mm -hmm. i see Yes, yeah, that's that's a good distinction. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, and in fact, uh, to uh, you know, corroborate this point, um, uh, Judith Butler says that Bouvier turns to the failed reciprocity of an asymmetrical dialectic, while Irigaray suggests that the dialectic itself is monologic elaboration of a masculinist signifying economy. So, in a sense, where Butler does use French feminism. and in a sense looks at irigaray's work also but realizes that there is a need to actually move outside of these uh, really speaking two important points she looks at uh, simone de beauvoir's work and irigaray's work is two very important moments in the feminist debate but also understand and uh, you know in terms of time we are we are not looking at the 1970s anymore we are looking at the 1990s so there is a need to kind of understand the feminist field itself in a different way so uh, and uh, butler's first question uh, you know is that is there then in in since we were discussing the whole uh, concept of the body and uh, the question that butler asks is is there a political shape to women as it were that precedes and prefigures the political elaboration of their interests how is that identity shaped is it a political shaping that takes the very morphology and boundary of the sex body as the ground surface or site of cultural inscription what circumscribes the site as the female body so if the first point was that the, we need to look at the body within the feminist debate the second point that is related to this is that is the body also shaped and constructed in a certain way it's not simply culture but the body is also constituted really speaking in a certain way which is why the question that butler is asking is is there a political shape to women as it were and what is it that circumscribes the site as the female body is the body then the firm foundation on which gender and systems of compulsory sexuality operate or is the body itself shaped by political forces with strategic interests in keeping that body bounded and constituted 
by the makers of sex. So what Butler is really speaking saying is that we need to look not only at the cultural performance of being a woman but one also needs to look at how the body on which this culture is inscribed, how is this body constituted. That is an important contribution uh, in a sense to the constitution of, uh, you know, really speaking, debates around gender. So, uh, uh, what would you say to uh, this kind of no, an I've understanding been about of this the point, physical uh, body? Uh, more, more as you as you, as you were talking, I, I thought uh, you you were elabor elab elaborating it uh, on the right track. Uh, that uh, body for her means experience. Body for means feeling. Body for means what what a woman is. And that uh, when cultural norms, you know, surround her from all sides, then she hits back through talking about the experience, mm -hmm. talking about the actions that that, that, that a woman takes vis-a-vis -vis society, vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the fellow human beings, etc. And I think it's, it's an important point to make because uh, mostly it's an idea-oriented uh, framework and uh, women have to come forward, as, as Judith Butler would argue, to, to challenge those ideas and to challenge those ideas with, with counter-ideas and counter-experiences. So that's how. So, friends, uh, the, the discussion so far has been on uh, two or three important aspects of uh, Judith Butler's contribution to feminism, and uh, it's a feminism of a different kind. It's a feminism, as Professor Pal Nagpal explained, is of the 1990s and 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 the uh, time which is the turn of the century, and that in this period particularly, women w would like to raise a scandal within courts, which means that they would challenge, they would aggressively pursue. Uh, the the uh, established themes, and uh, they would uh, not mind rattling, uh, you know, the the the, uh, the 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 male occupation with society, and and, and that a kind of equality, a, a kind of uh, counterculture also is to be established. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a good idea to 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 accept and and at least to ponder over, and uh, thanks thanks for this uh, for Nagpal that this is a, this is a new kind of uh, concept that we have got from Judith Butler. And uh, the discussion, of course, is going to follow in the next lecture. Thank you.